Everyone knows that computer chips are made of silicon due to its electrical properties that are easy and precisely controlled. But what if I tell you that there is a computer chip that is made without any silicon and for the first time it's beating top chips from companies like Intel and even TSMC? But what exactly is this technology and how is it going to reshape the tech world moving forward? If you love learning about game-changing inventions, subscribe to catch more stories like these. The Problem with Silicon Chips since the 1960s, when scientists discovered the amazing properties of silicon, they have instantly used it to power our phones, computers, cars, and even smart appliances like refrigerators. For years, scientists have made these chips smaller and smaller, to the point where we see chips as tiny as 4 nanometers. Making these chips smaller and faster is done by a pattern called Moore's Law which said we could pack more power into smaller spaces over time, and this led to amazing progress like faster internet, smarter devices, and even mobile phones that could run some of the highest quality console level games, like the iPhone running the Resident Evil series. It was all fun and games, but now the silicon chips are running into one big problem, and it's not because companies are out of ideas, but it's because of basic physics. Chips have become so small that now companies have to deal with sizes tinier than a speck of dust, as we already know in nanometers. However, at this super small scale, the rules of everyday life don't even apply anymore, and quantum effects start to manifest themselves, which are basically strange behaviors from the tiniest particles. Just think of chips like tiny switches called transistors. These switches would turn on and off to process information, like flipping lights in a room. But in silicon chips, electrons are supposed to stay in their lanes or in their area. However, when the area gets too small, electrons start tunneling through walls they shouldn't. It's similar to keeping water in a bucket with holes, as some of it would leak out no matter what you do. This not only causes the chip to waste a lot of energy, but also overheat and make mistakes in calculations. If they launch a chip like this in, let's say, smartphones, it would start to lag and the device would crash a lot. In short, no amount of clever design can fully fix the physical space issue, and it's like hitting a speed limit on a road as you cannot go faster without breaking the rules. Researchers have been quietly seeking something new, something that would not only replace silicon, but also start the new era of computing competitiveness. And this is something that companies like Intel, Qualcomm, and AMD are not telling you yet. Bismuth. Enter bismuth, a metal that has been around forever, but it's not famous like gold, iron, or even silicon in this case. Yet, it looks cool with forming crystals and geometric shapes and rainbow colors. Surely it wouldn't be used in making processes and chips, right? Well, you're wrong. You see, bismuth is used in stomach medicines like Pepto-Bismol, where it's used safely. But now, scientists are quite excited about its use case and the special atomic tricks that it's capable of. To make it simple, bismuth lets us control electrons in many ways that silicon can't. As silicon mostly uses the electric charge of electrons to make switches work, bismuth adds another layer called spin, which can be translated to electrons spinning like a top. This changes the whole working mechanism, adding a spin-orbit connection, which is super strong in this metal. Moreover, this spin-top movement makes it ideal for handling quantum effects without the leaks and problems that silicon would have. So, how do we explain bismuth to you? You see, pure bismuth acts way too much like a wire as it lets electricity flow freely without stopping. For a chip that's relevant for ages, you need something that can turn the flow on and off, similar to that of a faucet. To fix it, scientists dope it by adding small amounts of other elements like selenium or oxygen. This improves bismuth's property, making it behave just like a semiconductor. Moreover, with doped bismuth, we can build transistors that are tougher against quantum tunneling. It's like upgrading from an old leaky pipe to a new one that not only flows perfectly, but also doesn't leak any water. In the world of computing, this could lead to chips that are faster, use less power, and provide more efficiently, but not even overheating like the silicon chips did. While we've talked a lot about the theoretical senses of bismuth, is there anyone doing research on this metal? And has anyone actually made a working chip? You'll be shocked to know the advancements, but before we dive into that topic, do subscribe to our channel and ring the bell icon. The first silicon-free chip. Something is cooking at Peking University, China, and they have already made history with this idea. 
many researchers published their work in a top scientific journal called Nature Materials. What they did was create a fully working transistor, which is the building block of a chip, without using any silicon in all the key parts at all. The material choice? You guessed it right. They used a bismuth compound and created bismuth oxyselenide. To make it interesting, the researchers built it layer by layer, like stacking super thin sheets of paper. And each layer is so thin that it's almost like a single sheet of atoms. The design is called gate all around, which means that the control part wraps completely around the electron path, giving them a better grip and fewer leaks. They also grew these layers at low temperatures to keep everything precise, clean, and stress-free. The cool part? This prototype is working at scales where silicon is failing. Some parts are less than a nanometer thick, much tinier than anything in today's chips. Yet the results showed that it switches super fast, handles electricity efficiently, and doesn't waste as much power as silicon does. Compared to top transistors from Intel or other big companies, the bismuth one is quicker and more energy saving. It's not even a full computer chip yet, but it proves to us the concept. The team also stacked a few extra layers to make it denser, which means that it packs more power in smaller spaces without the overheating problems that some silicon chips could have. So what makes a material like bismuth special? What makes it special? The bismuth transistor isn't special just because of its design. The researchers used special techniques to ensure that each layer connects perfectly, reducing any gaps that could cause errors. The material naturally forms an amazing barrier layer, sort of like a built-in shield that helps the electrons flow smoothly. And while the main star of the show today is Bimsuth, other materials include graphene, which is a super thin carbon sheet, tested in similar setups for connecting parts. Graphene provides an invisible wire that is strong, light, and super conductive with almost no energy loss. In future versions, scientists are already thinking of combining bismuth transistors with graphene links to make the chips even more powerful than they are. Just remember that in this scenario, all the active parts, the ones that are doing the actual work, are free of silicon. The researchers did use a bit of silicon just as a base to hold everything, but the brain of all chips is made of all new materials. This makes it easier to build now, while paving the way for fully silicon-free tech later. Now, let's talk about some drama and why bismuth matters, the global chip race. This invention isn't just a lab trick because it's sparking a new race in technology. So who did it first? Of course, it was China. Why? That's because they have most of the world's bismuth supply and over 70% of global bismuth comes from China turning what was once a one-sided product into a valuable resource. Consider it from this perspective. If bismuth chips become the next norm, controlling the supply could give a country a huge edge, just like oil did in the past. This comes from a time when countries are competing hard in tech with rules limiting who can buy advanced chip-making tools. But other places aren't sitting chilly either. Companies like TSMC from Taiwan and researchers at MIT are already experimenting with bismuth, but mostly as add-ons to silicon, not full replacements yet. However, the Chinese team, as we discussed, went all in, creating something that is a standalone model. History shows that these shifts happen all the time. Just decades ago, we moved from vacuum tubes to silicon transistors, which changed the whole world. Before that, germanium was tried, but silicon ultimately won. Now, bismuth chips might be the next big thing, especially for AI that need massive speed without all the guzzling power. So, when can we expect to see this shift actually happening? The challenges and hurdles. We shouldn't get too excited yet because this technology is still in its early days. The bismuth is a working prototype, meaning that it has already been proven in tests, but there's no news that it will be available in Tensor or Qualcomm chips soon. Turning it into mass-produced chips is also tough because you need pure materials, complex building methods, and factories that would be set up just right. Silicon has had 60 years of progress, where special machines, supply chains, and standards today are making it cheaper and more reliable. On the other hand, Bismuth needs to build all that from scratch, and growing layers atom by atom might work in a lab, but just imagine doing it for billions of chips for smartphones, computers, and other electronic devices. That would take a lot of time, money, and new inventions. As of today, 
the whole tech world is still inclined heavily towards silicon, so the software, designs, and tools that are already in the market need updates once the chip material changes. According to our research and what we know of that past, bismuth might be used in special areas like military gear, space tech, or supercomputers, where the extra speed and less overheating could change the whole narrative. But for sure, over time, as it gets cheaper, it could become the new norm. The potential is huge. Just imagine phones that would be able to last days on a charge, computers that run AI without slowing down like they're from a decade ago, or tiny sensors in everything from clothes, cars, and other appliances. This could also solve big problems like more energy use in data centers, which already suck up powers that rival the power usage of entire countries. As of today, we're on the edge of a new era. Bismuth and similar materials aren't just minor tweaks, but they're a fresh start. With thinner layers, better quantum handling, and spin control, chips would be able to think more like brains and process information in parallel ways as well. Moreover, as we push for greener tech, nations would prefer low-power chips, creating a new breakthrough in this technology. What are some of the benefits you think bismuth would bring as opposed to silicon? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, to stay up to date with the latest tech news, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell icon for more.